Hello and welcome to ISAF Monitor. I'm sitting here with Dr. Daniel Gurr, the Managing Director of the Illuminate Group, Consulting Group. Um, thank you for coming, Daniel. You developed a model for measuring student performance. Um, it's called PRISM. Can you tell me a little bit more about this and why is it important for educational institutions to measure their students' performance? Uh, happy to. Um, PRISM was developed out of a series of client projects we have run uh, worldwide largely working with universities, but also associations. And in many of these instances, we typically stumbled into the same kind of problem set. And the question was always that in international education over the last 20 years, we have seen various waves, uh, advertising, marketing becoming better, uh, push into social media platforms. So the front end has been fairly well covered. But the big question has been essentially what happens to the students once they arrive on campus and over the last especially five years, more and more institutions have discovered that they're struggling to actually assess how these students are going to perform. We have seen retention rates drop, graduation rates drop, and obviously many international students make very steep investments, over $100,000 often, into their experience. And in non-graduation, obviously, it's a pretty traumatic experience, both for the institution, the student, and parents, and so on. So out of this experience, <coughs> we decided to pull this together into a cohesive model what PRISM allows is to simply merge a lot of data the institutions already hold out of the admissions office, out of the registrar's office, and then trace that student experience step by step, term by term, and actually then dissect this by nationality, gender, study field, language preparation, uh, secondary curriculum, and many other factors. Um, institutions can essentially submit whatever they have in a structured format. And our job is then to pursue pattern detection, saying is what segments of students do well what students' segments don't do well, why is this happening? And obviously at that point of time, you can use this model for retention, you can use this model as a feedback loop into <clears throat> marketing and recruitment. Give you a simple example, it turns out that obviously English language preparation is a key driver for student success. Um, you typically get test scores, IELTS, e you know, TOEFL, IBTs, Pearsons, and KLs here in Canada. And uh, it's typically <clears throat> very obvious that a very high linguistic competence goes hand in hand with academic performance. Uh, the question really is when, like most other institutions, you operate with a cutoff, typically in IELTS 6, for example, what does it actually say about student performance? Because at that level, we discovered many do well, but many also fail out of the institution. And we can then dissect, is it a real language problem? Is it a secondary curricular problem? Is it an overlay of these things? Do you need to change your admissions criteria? So do you need to require from students in IELTS 6.5 to actually drive better retention? Or is it actually a secondary curriculum issue and you simply have to acknowledge that some students from some secondary curricular backgrounds are not going to be successful in your institution? And uh, in the past, most institutions had some guesswork, but they never had systematic feedback loops where a VP academic um, would be able to go to the admissions office with evidence in hand and to the international office saying is here's exactly what's happening to these students here's so much we can augment to services additional training but here's how you also have to change your processes and your message to ensure that you recruit and admit students that can actually with a high degree of likelihood succeed in our institution